there's really four pillars of disease. Like when we look at every chronic disease, when we look at death in general, it, it, it all comes down to these four pillars, okay? We've got energy metabolism issues, okay? Like mitochondrial dysfunction. We have oxidative stress, okay? We have inflammation and we have cellular death. Okay, when we look at these four pillars, they operate in a vicious cycle that quite frankly can be linked to just about every chronic disease and ultimately death. It's, if we can break this cycle, we can start fixing these issues. And there now are legitimate, scientifically backed ways to break this cycle. And they have to do with ketones. The frustrating thing about the ketogenic diet right now is how it is publicized and marketed. I mean, I appreciate the fact that everyone talks about how the ketogenic diet is great for fat loss and great for weight loss. And I appreciate the fact that everyone says, oh, ketones are this tremendous fuel, okay? But they're forgetting the fact that ketones have amazing properties outside of just being fuel, okay? Sure, they give us energy. Sure, it's amazing energy. Sure, we burn fat. But that's all that's being marketed when in reality, that's like 10% of the equation. In my opinion, this is purely my opinion, the fact that ketones have hormone-like properties and alter our genes is vastly more powerful than just the energy that you get from it. It's simply like saying Batman is amazing because he has a cool mask and like completely undermining everything else, right? It's like, ah, cool, he drives a cool car. But forget the fact that he can save the world, right? Okay, that's what we're looking at ketones like. So I wanna to touch on the four pillars of disease and I wanna talk about them. I wanna to touch on the dual nature of ketones, if you wanna call it that, all based upon a review article that was published in the Frontiers of Nutrition by a specific Oxford group. Now, this Oxford group was the same group that was led by Professor Kieran Clark, who really originated all the modern ketone research back in 1995. So he originated the ketone research in 1995 based upon finding that the metabolic efficiency of a working heart improved with ketones. Now that's neither here nor there right now, it's just it lends credibility to this whole review article. Now the lead author on this review article is uh, someone in the name of Nicholas Norwitz. Now I've begun working with Nicholas Norwitz on some projects and he's begun working with me with my team on some projects. Really interesting guy and he was the lead author on this review article. So I wanted to do this video not only to give him some serious credit on some things he's worked on, but also to bring some amazing stuff to light and to introduce him to my followers and introduce him to people that are watching my channel because he's doing some really amazing things over there with ketone research at Oxford University. So anyhow, the review highlights the dual nature of ketones really, really well. However, the title makes it sound like it's only about Parkinson's disease and like a neurological disorder. I mean, although it all plays a part, I just, when you check out the article later on, I don't want you to think it's only about Parkinson's because it does highlight the dual nature of ketones. Anyhow, let's go ahead and let's dive into all this. But first, do make sure you hit that red subscribe button and also hit that little bell icon to turn on notifications if you haven't already. Okay, so these four pillars of disease. Again, we've got energy metabolism dysfunction, okay? The mitochondria not really working well. Okay, then we've got, of course, oxidative stress. We've got inflammation and we've got cell death. So let's talk about how ketones essentially interrupt this vicious cycle. First, we have to understand how we make energy. Okay, we make energy in the mitochondria. Now what happens is we have high energy electrons that are passing down this sort of chain of proteins. Now what happens is little bits of energy kind of come off of this chain and ultimately spin something known as ATP synthase. It's very complicated when you really get down to it. The electron transport chain isn't like a whole lot of fun to talk about for most people, but basically energy comes off of this and it spins a little turbine, ATP synthase. And when that turbine spins, it's creating energy. It's just like water flowing through like a hydroelectric dam and uh, spinning a turbine, right? So normally with that, you have just a certain degree of efficiency, not a whole, whole lot. Now, when ketones are in the equation, ketones end up changing the ratio in which the electron transport chain kind of works. So essentially you have more potential energy going through that ATP synthase. The simplest way of putting this is ketones make it so that you have a higher velocity of water running through the turbine, spinning, creating more energy. Or another analogy would be dropping a bowling ball from a greater height. There's more potential energy when it starts at a taller building, right? So when it does hit, boom, it's creating more power in a cleaner way. So that's another way that ketones are more than just a, just a fourth macronutrient, more than just energy. They are a cleaner, more efficient energy that makes it so that even mitochondrial dysfunction in sick individuals 
could somewhat be corrected by having a more efficient flow of energy. Very, very powerful, and when that is one of the pillars of chronic disease, if we can correct that via ketones, that's freaking epic. Okay, now we have to talk about how they burn more cleanly in the first place. They literally burn more cleanly. So with that whole electron transport chain process, what happens is sometimes, or a lot of times, electrons kind of branch off of that, and they go and they run through our body like a ball in a pinball machine and bouncing off everywhere, right? So it's like a bowl in a china shop. It's got, you've got this, this crazy amount of electrons just bouncing around, reacting with everything, reactive oxygen species, right? It, ketones make it so that there's less electron leakage. That's a simple way of putting it. So less electrons are getting out. So rather than having 10 bowls in a small china shop bouncing around, you have one or two bowls in a larger china shop. Okay? You just have less of an impact. Now another thing is when ketones are actually broken down, they increase something known as NADPH. Now NADPH is very important when it comes down to activating antioxidant activity within our body. So whether it's from glutathione, vitamin C, you name it. Okay? It is very important when it comes to activating just the whole antioxidant processes within our body. So we have a double whammy when it comes to oxidative stress. We burn cleaner because of ketones, and then we have sort of an indirect way of combating the bulls in the china shop after the fact because it activates NADPH. So again, we're already like well above the fact that ketones can just be burned for fuel. Now we get into the really exciting stuff this review article looks at. It talks about how ketones have hormone-like properties. It's almost as though they are like a master hormone within our body and we never even knew it. It's really wild stuff. So they have these signaling functions and they bind to a G protein coupled receptor, which causes basically all kinds of other binding, but it binds to something known as HCAR2, which triggers a cascade of a bunch of different things. Now, it activates something known as sirtuins. Now, these sirtuins are powerful anti-aging components. So when we activate sirtuins, uh, sirt3, sirt1, things like that, it makes it so we really do have sort of an anti-aging effect on our body. Additionally, it's gonna activate autophagy, which if you're familiar with autophagy, it's sort of the cellular recycling where components of our cells are recycled, okay? Then it's going to actually inhibit what's called nuclear factor kappa B transcription. So it's making it so inflammation is kind of altered and ultimately potentially reduced through different means, basically at a genetic level. And then of course, it has antioxidant properties as a cascade after this HCAR2 binding. So not only are ketones affecting antioxidants through how they burn cleaner, NADPH, but they also end up activating through this HCAR2 binding, a hormone-like effect that increases antioxidant activity in the body. It really does go around and help your body like clean up for lack of a better term. Now there's one other huge glaring thing that we cannot leave out, and I've done an entire video on this one before. Ketones, or beta-hydroxybutyrate specifically, inhibits histone deacetylase in cells. So what that means is that histone deacetylase is this protein that basically closes the books on our genetic library. I like to think of it like this. Our genetic library is like in a blueprint, right? And it's in a really tightly wound rolled blueprint. And then what happens is when acted upon properly, it can unroll so that we can activate it and be able to utilize our DNA and our genes to build new things. Well, a lot of times they get closed so tightly we can't even activate it. So the body's just kind of like, forget it, we're not gonna bother. Now what's interesting is ketones open up the doors to the library. It unravels the blueprint a little bit more. So this is really fascinating stuff when we see that because that means that ketones have an ability to alter gene expression they can allow us to grow and improve and rebuild in ways that we never thought possible, okay? Because normally we can't activate that stuff. So if they're able to inhibit histone deacetylase or HDAC, then we can open up a whole new world of what's possible with ketones. And there's new stuff coming out just about every week nowadays. Okay? So much research on the dual nature of ketones. Okay? We're now starting to see that, for example, ketones can even bind to histones and properly unlock even more stuff, okay? So the point is, is I want you to stay tuned on all the keto research that's coming out. Stop thinking inside the keto weight loss box and start thinking about the true practical pharmaceutical power of ketones, the magical thing that we can get just by changing our diet. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel. And again, big thank you to Oxford University and to Nicholas Norwitz for helping me out with this video. I'll see you all soon. Keep it locked in here.